Okay, now we're going to talk about cisplex, parallel cisplex, and geographically dispersed parallel cisplex. Had you already started recording, Bruce? Yeah. Okay. Okay, describe the difference between cisplex, parallel cisplex, and GDPS. There's a difference. Describe a coupling facility. Describe a cisplex timer. List types of GDPS configurations. Now, what I would like to do just before we start, I'm going to ask a polling question. For those out in the um, IBMers don't answer this, just the people that are non-IBMers. And I want to ask a, a new question. And the question is going to be, do you know what a coupling facility is or used for? I'm going to say, do you know what a coupling facility is used for? And let me, so the answers will be yes or no. And let me go ahead and conduct this. So for those of you that are out there, do you know what a coupling facility is used for? Isn't it used to connect trains <laughs> yeah. train together? <laughs> yeah, uh, so one comment in the room, and this may amuse some of you that don't know what a coupling facility is used for, because I'm going to go ahead and share the poll results. Oh, we do have one person on here that does know what a coupling facility is used for, but one person that was in the room, um, I think I just, do you actually see the poll results yourself? I, okay. One person in the room said a coupling facility, isn't that used for, um, uh, how do you word it, train? Yeah, train, train cars. To join train cars. And uh, it, it, in, in a way, there, there's a little bit of uh, interesting analogy to that. So those of you that don't know, you're going to understand something that IBM does that no one else has done to date. I don't know if they will be able, anybody else will be able to. Okay, let me go on to the presentation here. So when we're done, you'll be able to describe it. So System Z, the IBM mainframe, has clustering uh, has clustering technology. And I want to get into a little bit of clustering terminology. So the word sysplex, you can think of it as a collection of ZOS systems that cooperate. They can use certain hardware and software products to process work. It is a clustering technology. Now what parallel sysplex is, parallel sysplex is a sysplex that uses multi-system data sharing technology. It allows direct, concurrent, read-write access to shared data from all processing nodes. You can have as many as 32 servers, which is 32 individual ZOSs, can concurrently cache shared data like it's available to all the local ZOSs concurrently. So work requests that are associated with a single workload, such as business transaction, database queries, can be dynamically distributed for parallel execution on the nodes in the Sysplex cluster based on available processor capacity. In many ways, a parallel Sysplex system appears to be one single large system, but it could be up to 32 ZOSs participating like it's one giant ZOS, and they can be on separate processors. Even they can potentially be physically separated, and we'll talk about that. So how do they do that? 
Well, before we talk about how we do it, there's a huge number of benefits to doing this. Of course, the scalability is like none other. Um, for high availability, it's the best because if one system goes down, the other system can dynamically take over because it knows where the other system left off. It knows about the data, knows about everything else. So you can take one system down, the other systems just move on. Work doesn't hiccup. So it's for super high availability. You can use it for session balancing, transaction routing, and of course it's highly scalable. How do we do it? We do it with a coupling facility. What a coupling facility is, here's a diagram. Think of the coupling facility as shared memory, shared frames specifically. So it's frames that are known by all the participating ZOSs. Now each one of the ZOS has its own frames, memory, but it also connects to shared frames. That's the coupling facility. How do we implement the coupling facility? Well, the coupling facility is just microcode, and think of it that you just can IPL it, and then you can connect systems to it. And to connect systems to it, you, we have what's called a signaling channel, so that all participating uh, ZOS participants can talk to the shared coupling facility, and we have what's called a SysPlex timer, because timers are very important and clocking is very important to keep everything in sync. And then all these participating ZOSs share the DASD and the disk storage concurrently. So a coupling facility, repeat, it's really microcode, and that microcode, it's a little operating system that really is memory, shared frames, that are shared by all the participating ZOSs. Here's another example of it, the coupling facility, and then we have the coupling facility channels, known as the signaling channels, and it's actually showing how we're talking to control units down here. Now in this case, we just have two ZOSs, with a coupling facility, and all the disk storage, all of this is local, probably within a data center. The reason I bring that up about all within the data center is because we do have another type of technology called a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. There are different geographically dispersed parallel sysplex configurations. So what is a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex over and above a parallel sysplex? Well, a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex means your data centers could be in totally different cities. They could be, this sysplex is, part of it might be in Phoenix, part of it might be in Columbus, Ohio. And they're all participating in a parallel sysplex even though they're geographically dispersed, sharing memory. However, when you separate, physically separate them that far, you've actually got to hook up the disk controllers. The disk controllers have also got to talk to each other, not just the shared memory. So the disk controllers, if a disk controller gets an IO update, it's also sent to the remote site or the other site to update the disk over there too. So you have different levels of geographically dispersed parallel sysplex, all the way down to active active. Now there are some very large enterprises, they have three and four data centers in different parts of the country or different parts of the world. And the coupling facilities, there's coupling facilities at both ends, there's disk controllers at both ends, and all of them are connected with high speed links, and typically it's dedicated fiber, dedicated just to that company. And the active to active means that the workload could be running in any one of those three to four data centers, 
and they could load balance across the data centers. And so you got a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex for super high availability. Now, if you do it correctly, let's say a whole city has a problem. Well, if that data center shuts down, the other data centers can just take over. But of course, the other data centers, if you've, if you've got the capacity to hold it, then that's fine. Now, another thing that uh, big enterprises ran into, you're a very large enterprise, you can't get enough power into that building anymore for what's going on. So you build a separate data center somewhere else and become part of a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. That problem is, be is getting less and less because we're, we're able to create a lot more horsepower now in a smaller footprint needing less and less power. Server consolidation onto a mainframe is saving people a lot of power, too, into the building. So these are the different levels of geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. And I won't get into all of them. If, you're really, if you really want to understand it better, there's actually red books specifically dedicated to geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. It's how the giant enterprises do it that can't afford to be down. This is just another example of coupling facilities talking to mainframes. Mainframes have a sysplex timer to keep things in sync. And this is actually showing how you've got, you might have these FICON switches. They're talking to each other. And then you need the disk controllers to talk to each other in a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. So if I draw a line right down the center, that potentially could be two different cities. That could be Phoenix. That could be Columbus, Ohio. And then you've got to have links between them, really high-speed links. As I mentioned, there's, a, there's lots of good red books. There's one on parallel sysplex. There's also, in the IBM bookshelf, there actually is a bookshelf on parallel sysplex. Here are three of the best books to understand and get details about setting up a parallel sysplex. And also, there's many articles and um, presentations on the Internet about parallel sysplex and geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. So now you know the difference between sysplex, parallel sysplex, and a geographically dispersed parallel sysplex. For those of you that never understood what a coupling facility is, now you know it's shared frames that multiple ZOSs can connect to and share frames amongst the participating ZOSs. And right now the limit is 32 <coughs> ZOSs. A sysplex timer is the clocking that keeps it all, uh, that keeps everything in sync. Um, if we were to list the types of GDPS, the last one was that active to active, but there's a whole group of uh, different GDPS type of configurations. Active active would be one of them. 